brace, brace. I'm bracing. <laughs> with me, your Taskmaster, Greg Davis. Oh, you can feel it, can't you? That end of series atmosphere. Things are getting tense as we go into this penultimate episode with several of our competitors jostling for the coveted top spot that will lead them into the Taskmaster history books. Also, Ivo Graham is here. <laughs> it's at testing times like this that our competitors might look to the wisdom of those that have trodden life's rocky path before. I remember only too well the wisdom of my own grandmother gave me the day before a big swimming contest. I wrote it down immediately, and I hope it will inspire our brave competitors tonight. She said, I can't feel my legs. Don't just stand there, boy. Call someone. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> We're thinking about this, isn't it? Please shout hello with your hands to Frankie Boyle! <laughs> Jenny Eclair, Ariel Smith, Bino, and May Martin. And next to me, a man who drunkenly confessed that until the age of 14, he thought that his penis was an 11th finger <laughs> to be used for putting stamps onto letters. <laughs> I used to send a lot of letters as a child. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> may I ask for a prize task, please? You may indeed, you mighty steed. This time, they've all brought in what they believe to be the <laughs> sneakiest thing. Greg will hand over five points to the thing he thinks is sneakiest, and then the sneaky winner of the show will sneak home with five sneaky things. Hello, Jenny Claire. Hello, Greg. Hello, Alex. What sneaky thing have you snuck in? To represent <laughs> sneakiness, I have brought in a mask. Well, this is the mask that Jenny has brought in. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, how you're going to sell this to me as sneaky? <laughs> sneaky. It's a mystery to me. What's behind the mask? It's her own book. Yeah. <laughs> so this came out, and it didn't really get the publicity I felt it deserved. So I thought if I could sneak it on a program <laughs> such as this. And they'll all buy it. Jenny, I take it all back. <laughs> you are one sneaky sneak. <laughs> hey, Frankie, what have you brought in? I've brought in a book. It's a children's book called Orlando the Marmalade Cat. Mm. Here it is. It has a virtue in that it would send my children, when they were little, straight to sleep. <laughs> but what I found was they were quite resistant to Orlando the Marmalade Cat being brought out. They learned that it was essentially <laughs> chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, I got an artist friend to knock up a fake cover, which was this. <laughs> <laughs> and what I would do is I'd start to improvise some of Harry Potter and the Kung Fu Death Cult. <laughs> And then I would gradually go into the soothing rhythms of Orlando's seaside holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely work. Oh, God. Yeah. So far... Unusually good. Those are both great prizes. <laughs> Uh-oh, Ivo. Oh, dear. <laughs> I've got some great news for you. It's another book, <laughs> and it's the sneakiest book of them all. It's the English Dictionary. Here it is. Sneaky. <laughs> what a fickle mistress our language is. <laughs> What I'm interested in, Ivan, I suspect you know this, is how you define that book as sneaky. Let's open it up and find out. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> it's not a book, it's a box! <laughs> <laughs> What's in the book? Because right. I know that you're missing the dictionary, Greg, so just for you, I've chucked in... Here we go. The smallest dictionary in the world! <laughs> Are you excited to have... Pearson's miniature dictionary in oh, probably God. the pocket I inside say, the pocket. I wouldn't say I'm in any way excited. <laughs> Hello, 
May. Hi. Can you beat a sneaky dictionary? I hope so, yeah. Yes. I think that the sneakiest thing is um, a knock-knock joke. This is what May's brought in. OK, so... <laughs> <laughs> but what if you didn't realise, but you already know the answer to the knock-knock joke, because part of it is currently in one of your breast pockets? Uh, Have a look, Greg. Oh, dear. <laughs> It says May. But that's not the full answer. What if, without knowing it, Kyle also had part of the answer in, on his person? What do you mean, pocket, Kyle? <laughs> Other one? <laughs> this know. one? Oh. Pinhead. <laughs> that's my nickname. <laughs> Ivo, have a look in your pocket as well. I get to be part of it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> yeah. uh, I've got it. OK. Martin. Who's there? May Pinhead Martin. I didn't think hard about the joke itself. It was more about like the delivery of the joke. That was sneaky. I also got um, Alex's wife to mail me two of his socks. <laughs> Double oh. sneak. That's very weird. <laughs> well, Kyle, the heat is on. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of literature. All written, and they couldn't be written without this. It's a pen. Do you recognise that pen? I do not. Do you recognise this? Oh yes. So oh yeah, you... I, I signed that. You signed this. Yeah. He told me that Sekiro had passed a test of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is good. <laughs> but that, that's not all. Uh, oh, yes. Because when you signed this, you said... Who's this character? Well done. For your five points. Yeah. And that was recorded on that pen. It's a spy <laughs> pen. Oh. God, all I'm thinking was, how long was it in the room? <laughs> <laughs> but that's not all. <laughs> because the name Sekna Ensgith is an anagram of sneakiest thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, this is impossible to judge. And yet... <laughs> I vote this the best. We can agree on that, can't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should give him two points. OK. OK. <laughs> I can't differentiate between... May, Jenny and Frankie is the truth of it. So how many points for them? I'm going to give them four points. Oh, right. And anyone who does a three-tier sneak on me deserves the five. There we go. Four points for <laughs> Please, can we watch a nice little film, Alex? Oh, go on then, you big brute. And this <laughs> is a nice, messy team one. Hello. Hello, team. Hi, Hello. Alex. There are three spots. You must each go to a spot, please. Speedy of me. <laughs> I wanted to read the task, you know. I don't mind who goes where. <laughs> and how did you make that decision? Uh, Frankie started walking. It was too late. <laughs> make these things the same colour as those things. People and bottles must stay on their spots at all times. You may perform ten bottle stamps. And two bottle squeezes. Best colour matches wins. You have ten minutes. Your time starts now. What are we allowed to move? I have this. The easel's allowed to move. Frisbee me, the easel, old chap. <laughs> OK, this is quite key. <laughs> Lovely. So you're aiming for this. I'm really glad I didn't go over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 quite the sentence, Frisbee me the easel, old chap. <laughs> palette. It's a palette. If that's the worst thing about this task, I'm happy. <laughs> Just to be clear, the plan is to load it up with paint, 
and then to throw it back. <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> well, we've got that carnage to look forward to then. Should we crack on? OK, well, here are the threeers. I can see the aubergine, potato at the back... And then mango's easy, red and green. And well, should we not start with the potato? We should start with the potato. OK. Because that is white and yellow. White and yellow. OK, Jenny, why don't you try the yellow first? OK. How many minutes have we got for this? You've got eight left. Oh, oh God. God, no! Go, go, go! OK. <laughs> They screwed us over. He wanted some white. You did want some white. That's rude. OK, there's blue in this. This is yellow. Black here. OK, blue. do yellow, Kyle. Yellow. Okay. You ready? Okay, ready? You're doing a stamp? Yeah. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> OK, three, two, one. <laughs> nice one, nice one. You've got enough on the palate. Great. That's potato. You're doing beautifully. What's the middle one? It's mango. Which is red and green. Red and green. This is black, I think. Let's okay, just get well, another colour some... going. If I give you some blue, then you can make some green. Great. I'm hoping this is blue. Ready? <laughs> so sorry. We've only got one squeeze left. This is it. Yeah, great. Oh. OK, All right, red's coming. Stamps and red coming. That's oh. it. That's it. Yeah. That's enough red for the mango. Yeah. Right, you've got one and a half minutes, to. Oh. Right. OK, I need, like, black. Black coming to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, like, 30 seconds. Let me know when you're ready for this. It's coming. It's there. <laughs> Sometimes in Taskmaster, I find that you hear lines that, that belong somewhere else. And Jenny did a line that belonged in an action thriller film. When she realised it was the wrong colour, I went, ha! They screwed us over! <laughs> <laughs> Overall, though, I thought teamwork was genuinely touching. It was good. May at one point said, guys, we need to think about the potato. <laughs> <laughs> Just a team of two to go. Let's see how they got on. <laughs> Frankie. Yes? Are you sure there's nothing we're... M like? No. Ooh! Paint them white! It says the same colours. Will you really think if we paint those white, that will be a, that will be not a colour? Have you seen the show? It's a show about pedantry. <laughs> so you could just put two colours on there. We'll paint that and those. Brilliant. Those. A compromise between our two <laughs> methods. Right. So one long squeeze of yellow. One, one long, long squeeze, squeeze of, of yellow. Red. It's white. That's one squeeze. It's white. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. And that's. <laughs> it's the same absence of colour well, as Well, you're up. stamping now. Stamp me a couple of colours. But that's... Not, not white, it's not colour. <laughs> that's one stamp. <laughs> we need a lot more. Just stamp right on it. Stamp on it. <laughs> that's an absence of a colour as well. No, don't do that. We can use the blue. Yeah, so I'm starting again on this side. Right. <laughs> you happy with that? I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Right. Wing it to me, baby. Don't mess this, because I can't get off this thing. <laughs> I think I'm nearly the end of my stamp. You got two left. Oh, OK. That was the mask when I was stamping into my own face. Just leap, leap with oh. your heels. Leap. <laughs> you still got one more stamp. <laughs> Just do it better. <laughs> I don't think that helped. <laughs> 
That's the end of your time. <laughs> so, you probably wouldn't describe yourself as a natural stamper. No. <laughs> I thought you got better at it. I thought that you learnt the art of stamping during this task. Can I just say, I think his stamp improved after I said, pretend it's your father. <laughs> The task was just make these things the same colour as those things. So to make them all the same colour is very clever. Very clever. If they could pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we have a look at them then? I cannot wait. OK. <laughs> so the team of three tried to make the white items look like the original items, and that's what they did. That is yeah. so good. <laughs> this is the team of two's attempt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Again, both quite good. Really good. Smaller team, wetter conditions, better outside the box thinking, give us some fucking points. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Ivo come off his yeah. circle? <laughs> Didn't Jenny take more than two squeezes? I don't think so. Yeah, there were, there were one too many squeezes and Ivo did step off the spot. Right, so I could disqualify them both and there'd be no points all round. <laughs> or, because there was a mistake on both teams, we can overlook it. I I'm happy that they cancel each other out. I think that's fair enough. <laughs> it's not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Jenny. That's right. <laughs> Five points to everyone. They all win! There we go. I've got the scores for you. It's so exciting. Ivo's on seven, and then three people on nine, and Kyle on ten points. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 OK, what have we got next? Well, we've got another team task. Not really, no, it's prize task time. No, it isn't. Twice there, I was having a big laugh about what's next in the show. <laughs> 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 but it's actually time for us all to learn some valuable lessons. Who's that? It's me. Ah, two envelopes. Mm -hmm. A little, um, theatre, perhaps. Markers, chalks, felt tips. Oh, I had a sudden rush of blood to my groin at the sight of those. Lovely. <laughs> should, should I read them both? No. Oh, but just pick one. No. No. <laughs> Which one do you want to read? That one. Correct. Yeah. Put three single-digit numbers in the slots and open the second task. Uh, a two. Lovely. It's going in there. Mm -hmm. And I read this? Uh-huh. OK. Deliver a one-minute lecture about the year you selected. <laughs> Your lecture must start in 15 minutes from now. Most informative lecture wins. You may not leave the lab. Ivo, you selected the year... 1125. 1123. <laughs> oh, it's the year 1500. Of course there's a white in front of it. Shit and fuck, why did I do that? 1417. What was going on then? Presumably Hastings is recovering <laughs> from a big war. It was 500 years after the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> Ish. Oh, God. Oh, no, I'm getting into a fetal position now, because this is so awful. 1642. It's not Pangea, then. Pardon? You know, when all the Earth was just one chunk? Oh, I see, right. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Written germs. Yeah, I'm trying to write down a list of things that people didn't know in 1417. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... <laughs> witches. When were witches? I just need to go to the loo. Can I just go to the loo? Not allowed to go to the loo. I can't. I go to the... I've started a period. <laughs> I started a period, Alex. Jesus died, we think, around zero. There's a few Edwards about it then. Sword in the Stone, Excalibur, Merlin. <laughs> it seems to me at this stage <laughs> that the only historical event that anyone here is aware of is 1066. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just point out that Ivo and I have a really similar year. Yeah. And Ivo went to Eton and I spent high school on acid. 
and then go to high school. Odd to look at our two outfits and think that you're the acid one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> OK, first up to the lectern are Dr Graham and Doc Martin. <laughs> Your minute starts on the whistle. 11.23. The year is not 11.24 or 11.22. Rome has fallen. This is medieval, something you could shout li at literally any point in 11.25. Who? William I, the conqueror, dead. Uh, but his son or re relative William II, William Rufus, I think, is king. Christianity sweeps Europe. We're talking monotheism, baby. When 11.25 is established, what fighting illness? Why? Life hard, death frequent, tension constant. We're very far from the Renaissance. Monks, some of them are bald. The UK, I didn't include Ireland because I was mainly focused on this, I'm sorry. The main threat was from France, uh, constant threat. 11.23, numerically, one plus one plus two plus three equals seven. Seventh letter of the alphabet, G, G, God. AKA what I said before, Christianity swooping Europe because Rome has fallen. <laughs> I've also done my own family tree to put myself into the story. Uh, I'm one of three. Uh, my parents ran slightly out of time. Um, oh no, I'm inbred. <laughs> <laughs> there's some stuff in there, right? Yeah, there's some stuff in there. I wonder if any of it's true. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me again. Thanks, Ivo. Well, when I was a kid, the BBC would play out uh, open university films, and it was always some eccentric professor sort of rabbiting on about something that, as a child, you didn't understand. And I was taken right back there, Ivo. <laughs> yes, we had a historian called Dan Jones to verify your facts. Right up to whether he's in, Brett. <laughs> You said that everyone could shout medieval. That was your opening gambit. Yeah. Yes, 1125 was medieval yes. from our perspective, but could you shout it in 1125? Oh, no, because the concept, come on, Dan the Joe, concept is a product a... of the Reformation. You will not speak over the historian's words. <laughs> <laughs> Dan France. Jones is a piece of shit. <laughs> Can you get money back from Eton? <laughs> I didn't know you'd been on my dad's search history. <laughs> <laughs> Made it all right. Monotheism was the name of the game everywhere. Uh, it, it was. But yes. that, that was the very broad point that May made. Ro Rome is dead, Christianity swept the world, are the only two facts I ticked off. And then you did some spurious maths equation. <laughs> I have a beautiful mind. <laughs> OK, now, two experts on the classic years 1417 and 1500. It's Frankie and Kyle. Welcome to my lecture on Britain in 1417. <laughs> 1500. <laughs> or so. Uh, what do we know about Britain then? We don't know who the king was. All we know is that he was some sort of brutal English bastard. Things they didn't know about then include germs, atomic theory, radio waves, central heating, the rapture, and tobacco. It was a good year for farmers. Britain as a concept didn't fully uh, exist yet, and we didn't have a sense of British identity. Water wasn't invented in the 1500s, but used in the 1500s, yes. <laughs> and that is what happened in 1417. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Is that real? What? That's like. Um, 1500s, there was a lot going on, there was witches um, that, that came later. What they do have in the 1500s that they still have now is, like, dogs and people and huts. That's a minute. <laughs> was that a real minute? I had so much prepared. I think it was pretty informative. Some of it was true. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Did, did Frankie tell us anything that happened in 1417? I mean, <laughs> the man forgot his year as he started... <laughs> <laughs> Dan Jones might think differently. <laughs> Dan agrees there was no fully formed sense of British identity at the time. Yep. And Frankie's summary list of stuff we didn't know about in Britain is largely correct. <laughs> largely correct, yes! Yep. <laughs> Kyle, Yo. I think you're going to clean up on this. Yeah, same. I do, we don't even need to ask Dan whether there were dogs and people <laughs> and huts. 
Let's zoom in on water hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> But it was being used. Dan says the water thing is unarguable. I've never heard it put like that before, though. <laughs> There's only one person left to deliver their one minute lesson. <laughs> one minute on the year 1642. Here is Jenny's minute. Hello, 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 everybody. It's a joy to be at the campus this afternoon to spend some time with you all. And so I'd like to begin the lecture today by writing 1642. Now, <laughs> does anybody in the audience know what the significance of this date, 1642, is? It's a time of turmoil, it's a time of, of conflict, it's a time of weather. And it's a time of, of women really not having the kind of underwear that we have today. We have, we have little, little, little pants, don't we? And bras. I think men might have been wearing the cod piece, but we're not concentrating on them at the moment. You see, this is what they didn't have. Women didn't have that. They didn't have the pill either. They had, and they didn't have Rivita. Uh, quite often, you know, depending on your budget and stuff like that, um, People like to have swans in 1642. That's a swan now, but 1642, they were slightly different. They were more like that. Um, so, does anybody have any questions? Was that a minute? Oh, roughly, yeah. Do you want me to blow my whistle? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Thank you very much. Great work. Five minutes, 29 seconds. Yeah, I tried to stop you, but it was not possible. <laughs> what did Dan have to say about um, Jenny's long, mm. long lecture? <laughs> well, Dan says I'm not an expert on women's underwear, but I did a quick Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's about right on the women's uh, underwear. Codpiece, you're wrong. The heyday of the codpiece had finished about 50 years previously. Oh, my God. Uh, that was one of your only facts. Mm. <laughs> I can't speak to the history of Ravita, but Jenny's point does feel plausible. <laughs> <laughs> so I give some points out. I'm awarding points according to how many actual facts there were. In Jenny's, there were two facts, but you, you spoke for one week. <laughs> Kyle had minus one fact. <laughs> Because I enjoyed both your lectures, despite them being clearly horseshit, I'm going to give you two points each. Okay. Congratulations. Two to, two to Jenny, two to Kyle. <laughs> right. We think that May actually said one fact. Great. <laughs> Three points you. to May. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I have two facts. So he gets four points. <laughs> happy he is. And at the... <laughs> At the top of the tree, <laughs> it's Professor Graham with five sweet points. Well done, Mother Graham. Thank you. <laughs> OK, task me rotten, Alex. Ooh, I will. Right now, get ready for some serious perforation, Greg. Hi, Frankie. Watcher. It's quite a lot of bird shit. <laughs> Hello. Right. OK. Make exactly 99 holes in this piece of paper. Your holes must have a diameter of at least 3 millimetres. And form a recognisable picture or pattern. If you make more or fewer than 99 holes, you are disqualified. Mm. Also, if you look at Alex or speak to Alex at any point, you are disqualified. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. <laughs> That's a sneaky little trick of yours, nice speaking to you, no looking at you. Because mm, it's right. quite a simple task, really. It's just make 99 holes as fast as possible. Of course, but they're used to speaking and looking at you, so people are going to fall at that hurdle, you sneaky little boy. <laughs> Well, maybe they won't. Maybe they will. Do you want to see? Yeah. OK, well, I know someone who's been looking forward to seeing this one, and it's you, May Martin. I can't look at you or speak to you. Uh-huh. What's going on here? Uh, 
I shouldn't use brute force on the... I looked at you. Well, you're still a human in a way. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? I don't know. I'm disqualified. <laughs> I'm so sorry to my parents. <laughs> well, goodbye. <laughs> hey, mate. So sweet that you feel that sympathetic, but as my auntie used to say, may shat in the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Within seconds they looked at me and then we looked at each other and I was happy and you were sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening now, I'm lost in your eyes right now, I can't look away. Yeah. Maybe every single, every single one of these people has made the same mistake, wouldn't that be great? Oh, that would be... Five R's and out. Amazing. What if there's worse mistakes? Did you actually shit in some milk? <laughs> <laughs> Who are we going to see now, Alex? OK, well, I'm very excited to announce an incredibly special guest. It's one of the biggest reality stars in the world. It's Kylie Jenner. No, sorry, it's Kyle and Jenny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. You OK? Kyle? Do you understand all the rules? I understand all the rules. I'm not even looking... What? What? <laughs> That's not fair! Oh, no! 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 I was being polite. I'm not stopping. You're doing... I'm doing this. I don't care. <laughs> oh, that was mean! That was the meanest thing I've ever heard anybody do. <laughs> nasty, nasty trickery. Why are you taking a shoe off? I'm going to use my, um, this. You know, I've got weak hands. Right. 10, 40, hang on, 80, 16, 96. You're right. 20. <laughs> Am I allowed to use anything that's yes, in this area? Absolutely. <laughs> What's this paper made out of? Who are you asking that to? Better than a shoelace? Yeah. Good. <laughs> this piece of paper. <laughs> What's going to write you shit? Right. About me? Yeah. <laughs> Shall I stop the clock? <laughs> I'll stop the clock. You can look at me if you want. I'm not really talking to you. Three, nine, nine. Right, I've took the clock. <laughs> That's a lovely pattern. These don't count, and that should not be counted. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. You're joking. You, um, uh, delight me, Kyle. You have across this, the whole series by how angry Alex's little nerdy little traps make you. You cannot write on this paper on a piece of paper. <laughs> no, I, don't think was, I don't think that was a sneaky trick. There was an enormous piece of green paper. <laughs> You're joking! <laughs> Jenny, why did, you, why did you carry on when you knew that you'd been disqualified? I, I, I thought I might enjoy the task. <laughs> she did the holes very well. She doubled up the paper, which is very clever, quite quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and she did 109 holes. What was Kyle's uh, hole count? Uh, 99. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he definitely never looked at me. And, uh, well, he barely spoke to me during the whole process, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's put it out there. Kyle does not like Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Two left. Frankie? And Ivor. This golf tee seems an early fave. Ah. Do be careful. This hole punch certainly not to be sniffed at. What number are we on? And what's that first hole represent? I am focusing on my job. 
Happy with the tool? Thank you. 18, 19, positively demonic. 20, 21. That must be about, what, 65, 84? 26, 27, I've lost count. 1, 2, 3, 4. 72, 38, 64. Shall I stop the clock? <laughs> Check it again, exactly 99. Yes, and that's my face. I'll stop the clock. Good. I sense that um, Ivo's way of um, dissipating the irritation and stress that Alex was trying to cause was just to keep talking block him out with my own miserable internal monologue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was very effective. Frankie's was different, and it was to absorb it all. <laughs> to the point where I genuinely thought that you might throw those scissors yes. at me. <laughs> but both, both men did a lovely drawing by the end. Lovely but... drawings, consisting of 99 holes exactly each of them. Whoa. Yeah. And fast. Kyle was 11 minutes 47, because he didn't see the enormous piece of paper. <laughs> 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 uh, Frankie, five minutes 51. Oh. Much, much quicker. Ivo, five minutes and nine seconds. Whoa. Oh, impressive stuff. Wow. How did I do? <laughs> but very, very quick, 15 seconds. <laughs> There's only one question, I think, with one of them, which I want to play a clip to get your judgment on. Oh, yeah, sure. Have a look at this and see if anyone's broken a rule. 22, 23. It's got to be a recognisable picture. Four. You'll recognise. Uh, you plural will recognise it at home. 25, 26, 27. I've lost count. As oh. cruel as it is undeniable. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't shut the fuck up, could you? <laughs> which means it's zero points to Ivo as well as May and Jenny. Four to Kael, but five to Frankie Boyle! <laughs> mm. well, let's look at the scores before I launch them one by one onto the stage. Quite right, too. Yes, it's turned it into a bit of a two-horse race, which is between Kael and Frankie, who's in the lead with 18 points. <gasps> yeah. OK. Please head up to the stage for the final task of the show! <laughs> Hello, young fellow, my lad. Hello, mate. <laughs> Who will be reading the uh, task out? My favourite one, Kyle. Whoa. Oh, one. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying to win him, win him back. No chance, mate. No? <laughs> Combine two of your things to equal the height of the thing said by Greg. You may not use any of your things twice. Worst guess each round is eliminated. So they've got 30 seconds to combine two things to equal the height of what, Greg, in round one? Reese Witherspoon. Have a look at your paddles. Combine two things to be the height of Reese Witherspoon. Remember, you don't need to show us or squat. <laughs> no changing, thank you. So you may now exchange your paddles for the objects. Yeah, over or through the gap, that's fine. <laughs> She's ever so tall. <laughs> uh, would you like me to get Reese Witherspoon out? I really would. <laughs> I think Jenny's going to be disappointed. <laughs> well, here she comes. Right. So oh. how tall is Reese Witherspoon? Reese is a little bit smaller than a chicken standing on a cello. She's about the same as a chicken sitting on a cello. So I'm going to compare it to the what is that? A traffic cone on a cello. Let's have a look. The difference in centimeters is. 49 centimetres. All right, I thought she might be wearing heels. <laughs> 49 centimetres to beat. Great game. She's 27 centimetres taller than a chicken standing on a space hopper. We've lost Jenny Eclair! Jenny's gone. <laughs> that present, an old lady chair? Yes. <laughs> like in The Chemist. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Greg is... The Taskmaster's inside leg. Off you go. Three, two, one. 
two, one. Yes. I'd have gone for that. I'd have gone for that. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting association. What we were looking for, of course, is a meerkat on a space hopper. We haven't got that. We've got four warthogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, here, here is uh, the inner leg. The, uh, the slit goes all the way to the right there. That's where he is compared to me. And, uh... No, I think we found our loser, yeah. <laughs> that means we have lost Frankie Boyle! Unlucky Frankie. Yeah, so sorry, Frankie. <laughs> What's round three, Greg? Alpaca. Yes, it's an adult male alpaca, please. <laughs> OK. Swap away! They look taller in the advert. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out an alpaca and see how he compares to that. Out you pop. There he is. <gasps> oh, he's uh, big. He's big. He's a big one. Oh, what a big lad. I think we know who's safe. Congratulations, Ivor. You've made it to the final. Yes, well done. <laughs> and so it's a tie break to see who gets through to the final. All you've got to do in the tie break is write on the back of your meerkat how tall you think a meerkat and a traffic cone is combined in centimetres. Closest guess wins. You've got ten seconds. <laughs> Have you okay. finished? Kyle, what is your answer? Ninety. OK. What's your answer, May? I put eighty-four. The correct answer is... 108 centimetres. Kyle's in the final! <laughs> well done, Kyle! All right, so it's the final. Looking oh, forward yeah. to the final, guys. Well, I've only got one paddle left, so I assume there's a thrilling twist. <laughs> the last item is, Greg? Yoda. <laughs> Exchange your paddle for the thing you think is the same height as Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is Yoda the same height as a space hopper or a standing-up chicken? I genuinely don't know. <laughs> he's not tall. No, he's little. We know that. Short he is. <laughs> there he is. It's still... It's still close. I can't tell. No, it's Oh! It is close. Or this. We have a nine-centimetre difference and an eleven-centimetre difference. We have a winner! Oh. Right, we'll add those up. We'll add them to your final scores. Come and join me! <laughs> Well now. Well now, Greg. <laughs> so in the task, Jenny, of course, one point. Two to Frankie, three to May, four to Ivo, five to Kyle Smith Bino. Well done. Yeah. 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 Very good. Very good. And with one episode to go, it's tightened things up. It's a two horse race for the overall winner. There is now seven points separating May and Kyle. It's exciting. <laughs> and this episode. It's his third win in a row. Once more, the winner is Kyle Smith Bino! <laughs> Kyle Smith Bino wins! Please slink up to slip away with your sneaky thing! <laughs> so, what have we learned today? You may think you know someone, your friends, your family, but everyone is capable of being sneaky, even me. Open your mouth. <laughs> Jenny Eclair's new book is out now! <laughs> just one sweet final to go, but just one sweet winner tonight, and that person was Kyle Smith Bino! <laughs>
For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.